It is interesting to find that when an innovation is introduced among farmers, some farmers are quick enough to accept and adopt those innovations, while some other farmers take their own time in accepting these new practices. This can be due to the characteristics of the farmers, this can also be due to the attributes of the innovation. We will very briefly look at the adopter categories and the attributes of innovation. Adopter categories, we have uh, a five-fold classification depending upon the earliness or the lateness with which farmers are accepting and adopting innovations. The first set of farmers who are accepting the innovation are called as innovators. They are the first to adopt and they are not very influential. The second are the early adopters. Invariably, they are progressive and uh, they will also be looking at the observability of the innovation. Early majority is the third category and uh, they are deliberate in accepting these innovations. Late majority, they are less progressive, they are little skeptical and uh, they are also adopting the innovation relatively late. Laggards are the last set of farmers in accepting innovations. They are traditional and it is paradoxical to find that in the case of certain innovations, some farmers are laggards and the same set of farmers happen to be innovators when it comes to another set of innovations. And the distribution of the adopter categories, we have uh, these five sets of farmers depending upon the earliness or lateness with which they are accepting innovations. The five-fold classification, innovators constitute 2.5 percent, early adopters constitute 13.5 uh, percent, early majority have 34 percent, they are a majority and the late majority again a large chunk 34 percent and 16 percent of the farmers are the last set of people to accept these innovations. Let us examine what are the factors which affect the diffusion of innovations. Essentially, the innovation characteristics, the individual characteristics, the social network characteristics and there are certain other factors which affect diffusion. What are the innovation characteristics which are instrumental in either acceptance or rejection of an innovation? The first one is observability of the innovation. The degree to which the results of an innovation are visible to potential adopters is observability. Take the case of urea. When farmers are adopting urea for rice crop, they will be able to see the very next day a very rich luxuriant growth of the crop because urea's effect is easily observable when compared to some other nitrogenous fertilizers. When we talk about a relative advantage, it is the degree to which the innovation is perceived to be superior to the existing or the current practice. If a farmer comes to know that by adopting a high yielding variety, his agricultural productivity is likely to increase and his income is likely to be augmented, he will be considering that innovation as a relatively advantageous one. Compatibility is the degree to which the innovation is perceived to be consistent with the socio-cultural values and the uh, previous ideas and previous needs, perceived needs. And here there are two aspects of compatibility, one is the physical compatibility and the second is the cultural compatibility. Physical compatibility with reference to farmers land, the irrigation availability, the infrastructure that is available and taking into consideration these aspects, the 
innovation is uh, rated either as compatible with the existing infrastructure available with the farmer or not compatible. The cultural compatibility is something to do with uh, the values, the social norms, etc. To cite an example, if you want to promote a piggery project among farmers who are largely Muslims, we have to be very, very careful not to promote it because pork eating is not permitted in the Muslim community and therefore, we cannot think of promoting piggery in a Muslim dominated area because it is not culturally compatible. Trialability is the degree to which the innovation can be experimented on a limited basis and here we have a spectrum of difference. Say for example, a new high yielding variety seed. The new variety of a seed is trialable because if a farmer has one acre of land and if you recommend a new variety, he can try it in half an acre of land. It is not the case with the machinery because in the case of machinery, there is no possibility of buying the machinery in parts because the machinery is not divisible and therefore, the trialability of farm machinery is invariably less. Complexity is the degree to which an innovation is difficult to use or understand. Farmers who have lesser education cannot be expected to comprehend sophisticated technologies like precision farming or for the matter genetically modified crops. So, these are more complex for them to accept and adopt. The next set of characteristics of uh, individuals which are affecting the innovation decision process, the personal, social and situational characteristics of the farmers affect the innovation decision process. Depending upon age, education, socio-economic status, material position, cultural values, system norms, all those things are influencing spread of an innovation. And there are some farmers we have seen who are very innovative and innovativeness is actually an individual trait and innovativeness is defined as the degree to which an individual is relatively earlier in adopting an innovation than other members of his social system. It is on the basis of this principle of innovativeness, we have the whole spectrum of the different adopter categories. There are other individual characteristics like uh, farmers depending upon a number of other sources of information. There can be certain confusion caused by such a duplication of information and the duplication if it is creating certain confusion, the extension worker has to intervene and to see that the farmers get the correct information about the innovation. The farmers also accept innovations as a need for change. Nobody wants to be static, everybody would like to have a change. So, the need for change can be a factor which is promoting acceptance of innovations. Some farmers are uh, particular to get the recognition of other farmers. In such cases, the need for recognition from other members of the social system may be a motivating factor for the farmers to accept innovations. Network characteristics also play a very important part in diffusion of innovations. The social system network particularly involving the opinion leaders who are key communicators and these opinion leaders and uh, they will be able to influence the innovation decisions of the farmers. Sometimes the opinion leaders may be specialists in some areas. In some other cases, particularly in traditional systems, these opinion leaders are experts in a number of areas. This is the basis for the classification of opinion leadership into monomorphic and polymorphic opinion leadership. Monomorphism wherein opinion leaders are exclusive for exclusive specific special areas and in polymorphism a host of 
areas where the opinion leaders are considered as influential. The number of conducts within each adopter category is also a very important network characteristic. Among the early adopters, among the late adopters, how there is an interface or an interaction is also a determinant of a diffusion of innovations. There is also the possibility of the complex structure of the social system. If the social system is uh, marked by homophilous individuals, people who are similar in certain traits, their communication is more easier and therefore innovation diffusion is also faster. In a heterophilous system where farmers are dissimilar in certain characteristics, the heterophily or the dissimilarity may be an impediment in the diffusion of innovations. There are other possible factors like the social environment of diffusion of innovations. Uh, take the case of uh, rice, there are certain environmental activists who are against the conversion of rice lands for any other purpose. In such cases, their influence may be a factor in the spread of innovations relating to either rice or anything like that. Say for, to tell you an example, say SRI, the system of uh, rice intensification is uh, popular among the farmers now and that is promoted as an environmentally friendly technology. The promotional strategies employed also are inhibiting or facilitating diffusion of innovations. The promotional strategies like ATMA, Agriculture Technology Management Agency, uh, newer promotional programs like incentives given by the Coconut Development Board, the Rubber Board, these are acting as incentives and these promotional strategies also influence diffusion of innovations. Institutional structures, for example, the self-help groups and now producers organizations, commodity interest groups are coming in a large way and these institutional structures including the governmental institutions, they also play a very important role in diffusion of innovations. We have seen so far a number of aspects related to the innovation decision process. We have looked at the adopter categories, we have also looked at the characteristics of innovation and the factors which are affecting the diffusion of innovations. Thank you.